right, it is October 2nd, 2012. Uh, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. And uh, we're interviewing independent third-party candidates um, that are going to be on the ballots. Uh, we're running for Congress this year, and we feel that it's uh, important that people know all of the choices that are going to be on the ballot. Um, right now, Congress has a 10% approval rating, and... Um, you know, we have uh, enormous budgets, um, record-breaking budgets. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, people could say is going wrong and people aren't pleased. So what are the alternatives uh, besides voting no? Voting no for Republican or Democrats, maybe, or informing yourself about who all is going to be on the ballot. There's going to be about 70% of all the districts have an alternative candidate, like one we're talking to today, who is... Uh, Thomas, Joe, uh, uh, Cruz, Wiggins, and um, and actually you can uh, visit him at um, uh, his website, which is Cruz, C-R-U-Z, hyphen, Wiggins, W-I-G-G-I-N-S dot com. Um, he is running against uh, Eliana um, Ross Ledson, um, who is a Republican incumbent, and Manny Yavancy, Democrat, in uh, District 27, um, in Florida, and um, but this these uh, Congress people will affect all of us um, who live in the United States by a lot of their votes. Um, so, Thomas, thank you for taking the time to uh, uh, participate in this interview, this honest conversation on, on the issues, and um, and so we can know our candidates a little bit better. And uh, if you could please tell us what got you motivated um, this 2012 to put yourself. Um, uh, in the running, uh, in position, um, in case um, you know people choose to stop electing for the Republican or Democrat, or at least in your district. And if you could tell us a little bit about District 27 and a brief uh, bio. And thanks for joining us today, Thomas. And um, uh, good to have uh, you here with us for this interview, sir. All right, great, Thomas. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, as I start all things off. I just want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to um, talk with you today as well as the people who get a chance to listen to our interview at any point uh, before the election. You know, I began um, thinking about running um, about three years ago when I felt the tug that I needed to do more for my community. As a veteran, a U.S. Navy veteran and a school teacher, I was just seeing um, a day-to-day -day life in Washington that was just travesty to me. I couldn't understand how, why these people who get paid so much money couldn't come to agreement on uh, just general terms and be able to balance a budget and stop spending so much money that was causing uh, our future uh, children to be um, you know, responsible for a debt that uh, just seems to me uh, out, of, out of the ordinary or, or absolutely ridiculous. So I decided at that point that I would stand up and run as an everyday, ordinary American. I like to tell people that this time it's not about being a Democrat or a Republican. It's about being an American first. People who want to stand up, people of faith who are tired of listening of the bickering going on in Washington, and allow somebody ordinary, somebody who, um, who has veterans um, at, at their best interest, people who have... Um, you know, children at their best interests as a school teacher, somebody who has an opportunity to stand up for the rights of the unborn, somebody who believes that marriage is between a man and a woman. These type of things I stand for. And I stood up three years ago and began Congress walking my district. The district originally ran from Key West to North Miami Beach. I began a um, a walk from Key West at mile marker zero with a 15-foot flagpole with an American flag and a POW flag. And I walked from Key West up to North Miami Beach. While I didn't walk every step of the way, I did walk a majority of the way, and I met thousands of people who told me the same thing, that career politicians are ruining our country. The standstill or the gridlock that's going on in Washington, I believe it comes from career politicians. You know, what I find appalling is, is that we as Americans, we voted years ago not to let our president stay in Washington for more than eight years. Why on earth are we allowing our congressional and Senate leaders to stay there for life? I believe that term limits should be enacted, and I believe that people that uh, run for Congress should not be able to stay more than eight years 
and then they, if they want to rerun and run for Senate, that gives them an opportunity to stay another 12 years. I do believe senators should be able to stay for two terms, and that's where I, I believe that we should be able to eliminate the need for gridlock in our country's capital and allow ordinary, everyday Americans an opportunity to run. You know, my district got changed from redistricting to the District of 27. It was District 18, and now it is District 27. The district runs from Homestead, Florida, which is right there at the, get, the base of the Keys, going into Keys, and it runs all the way up to the, about the middle of Miami, which is, it kind of follows the US-1 corridor. So anything east of US-1 is in the District of 27. The incumbent, Ileana ross Leighton has been in office now for 24 years. I truly believe that she is a part of the reason why there's a gridlock in Washington and that she should give an ordinary American a chance to stand up and go to Washington and serve their country with pride. I believe serving in Washington is about a service. It's not about a career, just as I did when I joined the Navy um, several years ago when I spent uh, six years in the Navy myself. So the opportunity for me to stand up, I wanted people to know that it was possible for everyday ordinary Americans like you and I to stand up and run for office and that it wouldn't cost a lot of money. I truly believe in campaign finance reform. And the reason why I believe in that is because I think it's wrong that Americans have been brainwashed all of these years by countless advertising ads that run millions of dollars where these, this type of money can be diverted for things that are, are really of need in our country, like paying down the debt and other things that are going on. When you have somebody who spends millions or even a billion dollars on an advertising campaign to try and win an office, I think that's absolutely wrong. I think there should be uh, the same amount of time given for each candidate and that we should all have an opportunity to speak to our constituents on even playing fields, given the same amount of money to use for their campaigns. Uh, once you qualify, in other words, get, uh, given the opportunity to go head-to-head -head with them in debates um, on three separate occasions, uh, three to four weeks prior to the election, uh, on, in the, or in this case on November 6th. You know, one of the things that I'm up against running as a no-party affiliated candidate, I was um, asked with the Christian Co Family Coalition in South Florida to place me on their uh, voter's guide. Um, they said that they don't place no-party affiliated candidates on the voter's guide. But after talking with them and making them understand what my values are and participating in their events, for the first time in their history, they have, uh, have given me or giving me an opportunity to be placed in their voter's guide, which will be going out um, in the next couple of weeks. So that was one of the first things that I, that I won as an opportunity to be represented uh, to the people. What I'm experiencing today was a call to the Miami Herald and the editorial board at the Miami Herald. I asked them if they would meet with me as a candidate to um, give me an opportunity to present myself, and they said, no, we don't do no party affiliated candidates. Here again is another tragedy that's going on in the United States of America, where they are taking their, uh, their liberal views and blocking out someone who has worked hard to be placed on the ballot and has an opportunity to accomplish good things for the voters. They're not giving equal playing time, and I think that that is un-American, and that is absolutely wrong. People of faith, people who believe that this should be reversed, I am asking you now to pick up the phone and call the Miami Herald, write the Miami Herald, and say, this is wrong. You should allow all candidates who have earned the process of being on the ballot the opportunity to be interviewed by their editorial board. As I move forward in the next uh, 37 days or 36 days, really 36 and a half days now, I'm just trying to um, accomplish what I believe I can do with the little money that I, that I agreed in my heart that I would raise to show that anyone can do this. I set my limit of $4,999.99. Yes, a lot of people say that's absolutely crazy. But the fact of the matter is, is that I believe in the power of prayer in a grassroots effort. Grassroots campaigning is not about um, somebody paying somebody to go out and campaign for them. It's about gaining people yourself and doing the work yourself, knocking on doors, meeting people face to face, 
giving them an opportunity to see who you are and what you represent. That's what I've been doing, and that's what I've been accomplishing, will continue to accomplish up to November 6th. I have an opportunity to prove that with that little bit of money, I can keep the federal government out of, out of me, because if you go over $5,000, the federal government then requests that you send them all the information of who donates money to you. You have to open up your records and all these other things. I think that's wrong. I think that we should have an opportunity to um, do this on an even playing field, and I think that's the reason why real campaign finance reform should be taking place, and I'm trying to prove that as an ordinary, everyday American running for Congress to go to Washington as a person of faith. Well, Thomas, uh, that's a, so you've answered a lot of questions that I was going to ask there, and I'm, I'm glad that that's a good way to just uh, put it all right there on the table. And um, uh, the, the way we're going into debt, I mean, um, we outlawed indentured servitude a long time ago or, or these debtors' prisons, and, um, and that's what these Republicans and Democrats are doing to our entire country. It's a very serious issue. Um, they, they want to... They're, I mean, if I mean, what could be possibly the goal to, with the actions we're taking right now to to, to, to bankrupt the country? Maybe I I, I don't know. Um, but uh, that that's the actions it's taken, and I couldn't agree more about the um, absolutely. You know, I couldn't agree party. with you more. And in the no, go ahead. The gridlock that we have in Washington, I truly believe, is based on career politicians taking advantage of our country and keeping special interest in their heart instead of keeping what's, what's so e essential to our core, which is the, the people that we vote for, the, uh, are the people who are voting for them. We, the voters, are in control of who goes to Washington. And instead of being brainwashed, which they've allowed us to do over and over and over, we need to do what's, what's right. We need to take the courageous steps necessary to implement sound physical policies while protecting Social Security, Medicare, and the most vulnerable among us. You know, I think that most Americans have had enough of this, and they want to eliminate the gridlock in Washington. The only way we can do that is by voting out career politicians. A lot of my people, people of faith, that come to me and say, you know, I, I really want to help you out, but, you know, I'm a Republican. I've got to vote Republican. Or I'm a Democrat. I've got to vote Democrat. You know, I keep trying to explain to them that in 2012, more than any other year in our history, is not about being any type of political party. It's about being an American first. Don't be a Democrat. Don't be a Republican. Be an American and vote your heart where you can feel the, the heartbeat of Americans staying with you. Do not let career politicians ruin our nation's government. Give the, the control back to the states and eliminate government waste and allow the states to do what was originally created for us to do by allowing the states to do what's right for their constituents or their population in their states alone. Well, Gary Johnson, who's running as a libertarian, um, whether you agree with him or not, there's this one very um, impactful statement that uh, has has been left with me that, that he, it's kind of something he always says on his campaign ads, and he says, just for one year, just for one year, be libertarian with me. And um, I, I'm saying just for one year, something a little different. Just for one year, though, the same kind of what you're saying about this urgency of 2012 is for this one year, folks, um, let's change the Congress. Let's change the House of Representatives. Let's get as many independent third-party candidates who are going to uh, who's going to swear to the oath and take it uh, seriously and, and who want to do that um, as possible. I mean, maybe we could get one for each state or, or some kind of just national goal like that. And that's why we're doing interviews with 50 candidates. Do I agree with all the issues on all of them? Of course not. So I've had about 50 different interviews, and, um, and some of them are Green Party, some are Libertarian, some are Independents. They're all better than the Democrats, Republicans. What I'm looking for here is who's the most qualified and, um, you know, what are their past jobs? Have they ever had a real job? Um, most of these Republicans, Democrats, have never had a real job. Um, or, you, you know, maybe they worked as, uh, you know, secretary for another congressperson before they decided to run on their own. And, and, and then, um, you know, are they going to take the oath seriously? And that's 
very important. Uh, um, a lot of these people are violating our civil liberties, and I think we need to send a message. And um, number two, are they going to have the spine? Maybe they could believe in all the best things possible. Maybe they totally agree with me. But if they don't have the spine to, you, you know, stand up to, uh, to to whatever, the powers that be that are, you, you know, g crushing us in debt, then, then it's really not going to matter. I mean, you could send a message perhaps, but I mean, we need people to really call out, you, you, you know, the corruption that's going in there, all these special interests, everyone just thinking about themselves, trying to get their buddies a special deal and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it just boils down to just pure corruption. And um, so, I mean, if, if they match all those things, um, at least for two years, let's take this ride and, you know, make it a shot heard around the world, uh, you, you know, occupy the house, have a tea party, throw these people out into the harbor. Um, uh, and for basically, though, I mean, that's, uh, you know, just kind of mottoing. But the, the main thing is who's the most qualified person and who's going to best represent you. And um, and there is something cooking in 2012 where, um, you know, it's an opportune time to have people in position like Thomas here. Um, and uh, it, it really is. I mean, it's such an overwhelming decision um, that that's um, that, that he's the best choice here. I mean, compared to. Uh, the 10% approval rating that Congress has now and, and everything that they do, it seems like every single thing, they're just, um, it, it, it's, it's not what the people want. And, and, and people are, dis I mean, George Bush had a full Congress. He had a full House of Representatives and Senate with um, all Republicans. And, and, and they, they spiraled the debt and increased the debt ceiling numerous times. Um, you, you know, they've done a lot of bad things, and people were sick of them. And then Obama, he had a full Congress, full a full House and Senate of Democrats. And so people keep going back and forth because they're scared to, you know, entrust the power um, that we, uh, you know, that these elected officials, um, they, they call themselves officials instead of uh, representatives, um, want to have. And uh, they don't want to, you know, let, let anyone have this power. So what else is the alternate choice? And um, so some issues, though, ro ro some other issues, I mean, we kind of uh, covered a, a lot of them so far about election reform and um, the State of the Union. And uh, what about... Um, and, and, and reform, and uh, tr what about transparency in government? I mean, does it seem like um, the government knows a lot more about us than they used to, but at the same time, getting to know about them seems um, like uh, very difficult to do. Yeah, it's like trying to pull teeth, as my dad used to say, you know, because I think that the government itself has backed itself into a corner and trying to make everything hidden from we the people. We the people are what pays their salaries. We the people are what America is all about. And I think that congressional candidates across the board should be people that are new, people that have an opportunity to make a difference when you get there so that they can see the transparency taking place. People who come to Washington, such as myself, a true miracle happens on November 6th. I take out a 24-year incumbent and I go to Washington. I'm going to report exactly what I see, and I want people to know that. I think it's imperative that we as candidates of, of, of desire to do what's right for America go to Washington and make real changes, not changes based on what a president says, but based on what America as a whole is needing more than anything, physical restraint. We need to, to, to physical, take that away from the, uh, the, the congressional and uh, Senate leaders because all they've done is just run our country into the ground. I believe every one of them that's been there more than 8 or 12 years should be replaced. Just as you mentioned, uh, Gary Johnson said, absolutely take that and make it transparent across the board. Because it's not right that they have freedom to look into anything that they want to just based on what we might say or disagree with. That's what America's all about. We have the right to protest. And just now, it seems like if we protest uh, Obama when he comes into town, we might be told by a Secret Service agent to get off, get off a certain area because they find it unstable. Those type of things, I think, are wrong, too. And I think it's come down to us changing guard in Washington and giving ordinary people a chance. Okay, great, great. That's um, that's you know what we need a, a lot of, and um, and hopefully you're not you, you know hopefully you get in there. Hopefully you're not the only one. Hopefully that there is um, 
uh, you know, November to remember, a, a storm, a tempest among the electric that pulls the emergency brake calls, called the House of Representatives every two years. You know, we can have term limits. We can hold them accountable right now. It's just as easy as a decision in spreading the word with a $5,000 budget. I mean, you can take tell five people to tell five people to tell five people and um, and get out there in the streets and, and, and meet people door to door, etc., cetera, and, and town halls. Um, so uh, two questions. So I've, I've asked everyone. Well, I'll just add a third one here because there's three questions I've asked everybody um, so far. And uh, so it's a little bit of consistency. There are usually topics that probably aren't going to be debated too often. But um, but I, I know a lot of people out there feel um, passionately, and, and they're not all the same issue, but um, abortion, the drug war, and also the National Defense Authorization Act. If I could, if you know, throw those three um, issues at you, sir. Sure. Um, well, first, first and foremost, um, you know, I'm a man of faith, and I and I truly believe that God's word is infallible, and I believe that conception um, starts at at, at li life. Life begins at conception. Life right. begins at conception. So um, there's really no debating in, in me. I, I, you know, even people try to tell me, well, what about a, a person who's been raped and things like that? And, well, in, in in that case, I I have seen and have read instances of a person who was the child of a rape, who turned out to be a war hero, who saved uh, countless lives in battle. Um, I've heard of people who were saved uh, from abortion at the end, who turned out to be a, um, a, a model teacher. So these type of people um, happen from these type of events, and I believe it's a part of God's will sometimes. I don't think that it's right, of course, that somebody gets raped. But when they conceive based on a rape, um, I do believe that that baby uh, needs a chance to live and have an opportunity to grow up in a normal society. Um, the drug policy reform is, is one of the most essential things that our United States of America needs to do. We have for so long have been fighting a losing battle when it comes to uh, illegal drugs. You know, I, as somebody who is a part of the, uh, the baby boomer, I'll be 50. I was at the tail end of the baby boomers. I'll be 50 November 4th. You know, I, I grew up in the 70s, and I, and I know what it's, um, what it's like and what, it's, what drugs have done um, to different people. You know, drugs have affected my life, of course, just as most Americans have affected. That's my age. But I do believe that we need to reform our drug laws and allow an opportunity to look deeper into a policy reform that possibly um, gives the authorization to tax uh, certain drugs, such as marijuana, like alcohol and tobacco, were taken away in the prohibition during the 1920s. Obviously, they, it wasn't something that worked. Um, when we're now spending millions, if not billions of dollars, trying to capture um, people for growing or selling or what have you. So I think that, that, that it could be regulated and allow an opportunity to understand its use better um, through real um, research in, in that. You know, I think the only real, real reason why it's not legalized is that they don't have any way to, um, to regulate its, its, its potency or, you know, like alcohol. They can give you a, an alcohol test and they can tell you're drunk at point zero nine, you know your your faculties and everything else. You know, as people um, smoke pot every day and and and, and live a, a functional life. Um, you know, I don't always agree that it should be just open across the board, but I do believe that it should be regulated some way, and that it would be able to um, reinstill um, in America what. Well, it'd probably make it harder for kids to get it because it's easier for kids to get alcohol. I mean, I mean, for marijuana than it is to get alcohol, you know, or or tobacco. And and there's a lot of family. I mean, there we have the highest incarceration rate. There's a lot of families that are split apart, um, uh, just for victimless crimes. And um, not saying, you know, of course, if there's other crimes involved, then that's a whole different subject. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think. Um, uh, you, you know, it's it's not a criminal matter, um, as uh, if anything, a healthcare matter. But like you said, probably should be studied. And and right now, people are um, doing time that doesn't fit the crime. I would say, um, and um, uh, it's sad that we have the highest incarceration rate out of any other country in the whole world. Um, and um, 
and that has a lot to do with it. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, the uh, the third one that you were saying, the NDAA um, of 2012, where now there is a national defense reauthorization every single year. Um, so there's nothing special about that in itself, except that there's two provisions that were um, added on. Um, uh, Ileana voted for that. There was, you know, a couple, actually, Republicans even in Florida um, that voted against it, but there's only two people in Florida that voted against it, actually. Um, and uh, one of them's running for senator right now is Republican uh, Connie Mack. That's it. Um, but um, uh, what do you, do you think? Uh, the, there are two provisions that were added on that had nothing to do with this bill. The military didn't want it. But um, and it introduced the, this notion that... Um, uh, the you know the, the president and executive branch can be above the law. They can uh, you know pretty much snatch and grab people right off the streets um, without any due process. Uh, talking about American citizens and um, and hold them indefinitely. Um, is that the, the subsections 1021 and 1022? That's exactly it. 1021 and 1022. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm against that. I think it's wrong for them to be able to just jerk people off the streets. I think that the um, the president has gone too far in this. Um, I think that the the need for our government to um, use the Bill of Rights as what we have created already as their foundation um, should be uh, utilized. And right now, I don't uh, I don't see um, that that's something that should be um, continued. And hopefully, uh, we'll come. They'll come in, and a new change of guard will um, be able to eliminate that. Great. So, yeah, the Bill of Rights is um, uh, precious. I mean, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, and, and the Constitution really is a baby in, in the history of time. Um, you know, it's only been around, you know, a couple hundred years, and, uh, uh, you know, most of history has been tyranny, and um, so we've had this, you know, age of enlightenment, and hopefully, we, you know, we have a republic if we can keep it. And um, now, is there any issues um, that I didn't get to um, you know, and I know there's more issues, obviously, but that's, um, you, you know, you'd like to bring up at this time, Thomas. Well, um, you know, I, I think that one of the most important issues that are in our district right now and, and you know, in our country faces, uh, too, is the, um, the right uh, for people to marry. Um, and, you know, we as um, people of faith believe that marriage is between a man and a woman and that we are um, basing this on the Word of God and that we can't place our own desires in the Word of God. And in our district, we, are, um, we have Ileana ross Leighton who has come out in support of the, uh, of the repeal of Defense of Marriage Act. She was one of the co-authors of, of the repeal of DAMA back in August of 2011. And she's aligned now with the uh, President's stance on gay marriage. Um, I myself just don't believe in that. I'm, I'm a true Christian at heart, and I believe that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, and that it ruins um, the core structure of family, and it does not uh, give the, the, I believe, the truth of what, um, what God created uh, the world for. Um, he did not create the world to fornicate uh, with man on man or woman on woman. I, I, he created the world for, um, to create life. And, and humanity was created to create life. So that's one of my, um, my strong um, decisions. I think that across the board we should have a real school choice. And I believe that um, some of the, um, the recent uh, consulting firm of McKinsey and, and Company re released an, uh, an eye-opening report about the economic, economic cost of the U.S. education gap. I think that colleges um, should have an opportunity to, to be a part of this, just as we have done with the voucher program and allowed schools of choice uh, for people across the board. You know, we want to make sure that we're going to the right places at the right time uh, in schools and, and allowing um, parents and uh, people graduating from high school the opportunity to go to a college that's competing for, you know, for your, uh, your academic uh, stature there. So. That's another thing that I think that's very, very important on, on my side of the issue. Any other things that you wanted me to cover at all? Well, the, about the um, a marriage issue, do you think, um, what about civil unions? Do you, for, like, illegal reasons, do you think civil unions should be um, able to be done? Well, one of the, you know, one of the things, you know, straight up um, in, my, in my heart is, is that um, 
we're not supposed to judge um, anyone for anything at any time. And, um, you know, even though I, the, uh, in my heart the Word of God and, and God tells us that, you know, fornication with a man on a man and a woman on a woman is wrong, that if that's what they choose to do, I'm, I'm not against them uh, receiving that, that ability because it's not my place to um, put them down for that. It's really an, an opportunity for us to try and understand what has made th this situation uh, be so acceptable in the United States when at one time um, it was looked down on. I think that we shouldn't judge anyone and we should give everyone an opportunity to live their life according to their own desires. And uh, the last question we've been asking everyone is um, anyone on, like, you're in an election campaign right now, so uh, there's probably lots of uh, strategies, thoughts, and, and et cetera. Um, anyone that, um, that you've been inspired to think about recently um, uh, or read about or, or someone, you know, in the past, present, or, or future, I guess, uh, and, and if you wouldn't mind sharing that, with us, and, and, and why was that someone you were thinking about recently? Well, you know, um, I've been looking back at a lot of the history of our country, um, seeking out the foundations. Um, you know, David Barton comes to mind when um, I had a chance to meet him one-on-one, -on -one and um, he was, you know, a true historian, uh, explaining the different reasons of, of what created our country. You know, I think that the um, the... This, these, these religious liberties that Ronald Reagan stood for when he was in, uh, as president is someone that I look back and, and, and would like to mimic. Um, I see him as someone who wanted to do what was right for all Americans and not just for a certain uh, group of people or, or, or a party itself. Um, I truly feel that he was um, a man of faith who believed that the United States of America was a, uh, a place for all people of the world. And that's what makes America so unique and so strong, is that we are a, a true melting pot of all religions and, and, um, and desires across the world. So I, I've been looking a lot at Ronald Reagan um, and, and General David Barton has, has given me a lot of um, strength in, in some of the things that I discussed. But also Glenn Beck, um, you know, he, he himself, he is, he's, tooting, um, you know, that, that horn really loud, trying to get people to recognize that don't let them steal our, our civil liberties, our religious liberties. Don't let them take away the things that we cherish um, so much as Americans. Um, the, the, the ability to pray to anyone, anytime, anyplace. Um, the, the ability to protest anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And, and these type of things are important to me as well. So I wish Glenn Beck would give me a call and give me an opportunity to uh, talk to him as well. Maybe through this interview with you, he will. Yeah, that would be great. I hope people um, spread the word um, also about our website, libertarianprogressive.com, because there you will see just a sampling of the hundreds of people that you can vote for. I'd say about 70% of every of all the districts in the country um, do have uh, you know alternate choices. Um, that are people that um, are sincere and uh, I would say uh, very qualified. And um, so uh, if, if you, you know, uh, call into your radio stations, etc. cetera. I, I mean, just do everything you can to spread the word instead of just always think about money. Just think about what you can do to spread the word. And, uh, and you, you know, this November 6, 2012, um, you know, we could... Uh, had some actions that results on November 7th um, saying that, um, you know, con there's a, a, a sweep that happened. Uh, you know, we swept out some of the dirt and um, and then put in some nice, um, you know, constitutionalists in there. And so, Thomas, it's been a pleasure. I'll say goodbye to you off the air. Thank you for, um, you, you know, this uh, more in-depth um, interview and, uh, you know, kind of just getting, you know, your thought processes as well. And uh, so I hope you have much success on your campaign, getting your word out there and getting in, you know, hopefully there'll be a debate uh, soon um, and that you'll be invited to. So people call the Miami Herald, as you said. And uh, that's, um, 
I, I mean, would you sign a contract if you only read two thirds of that contract? I mean, there's another, and just hoping that that one other third um, isn't something that you really needed to read about. Well, um, here's that other third part of the contract that that you might have really wanted to know that that could be a big impact on uh, whether you, you know uh, who you want to vote for. So. Um, yeah, I, this this more, year is very important. I hope that people st step up to the plate and um, take our country back, give people an opportunity to realize that it really isn't about being a Democrat or Republican. It's about being an American first and support what you're trying to do um, across the board. And thank you so much for your time today. God bless you. All right. Godspeed. Um, please, uh, yeah, I'll say goodbye to you right after this interview. Thanks again, Tom. All right.